This sermon was downloaded from www.spiritnerds.org. We equip Christians with thousands of strategic spiritual materials daily. Join millions of Christians around the world who have come to Spirit Nerds to learn about God and His Word today. When you find someone that has the backing of heaven, when you find someone that is situations that the devil or other people uh, accommodate him as a springboard to lift him up, then you realize that such a person is well ordered, is in accurate alignment with the systems that propel destiny. He knows something more than what is natural. And that is why he has the powers of the unseen realm safeguarding and projecting his possibilities. A lot of people are careless about the issues of authority. But they do not understand that it is the bedrock of advancement, of upliftment. Is the bedrock upon which you can actually break through and succeed. What authority does is that he hides you and he reveals another. And in spiritual warfare, before you fight, you will need to hide yourself so that the one under whose authority you are functioning can show through your theater. There are many things that you, as you, cannot contend with successfully. There are many things that you, as you, will not survive. But you will have the capacity to revenge every disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Hallelujah. And as we grow in the things of God, you know when someone gives his life to Christ and is born again, if you take an inventory of his experience, all right, you will find plenty of activity, little of obedience. When it begins to mature, then you begin to find plenty of obedience, little activity. It means he's beginning to migrate into conformity and alignment. And the prescription that Peter is giving us is that you need to humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. I was instructed by the Lord to pioneer a ministry in Vinway State, and when we came, we started second year. We're making some progress. And then God spoke to me one night and said, if you are looking for me from now henceforth, look for me in the night. And in my own opinion, that was outrageous because I have a schedule that I work on. I'm not in full-time ministry. All right? I've been in the service for 15 years. So in order to manage public service, manage ministry, manage family, manage business, I have my schedule and it is in my interest to sleep in the night. <laughs> <coughs> so I didn't obey that. I said, oh, this matter, you know, it can't work. So I continued preaching. And I was making progress based on my own estimation until one day after preaching, I came down from the pulpit, I went back home, and half of my body paralyzed. And I said, am I not serving you? This thing that hit me on the back, where did it come from? He said, but I told you, meet me in the night. Then I now discover that we don't live by God's explanations. We live by his instructions. Because there are many things that God will not explain when he's dealing with you. If you want to be intellectual with God, he will allow you to have several experiences that are not part of the syllabus. So I had to repent. Then I started obeying with the paralysis. And as I continued obeying, the paralysis began to wither. Continue. And it took six months 
for me to get myself back. There are several lessons. Some of you are learning now because you are not in alignment. It's not part of your destiny. It was just added. Just like John chapter 21 was added. There wasn't supposed to be John chapter 21. The reason for John chapter 21 was because Peter decided to backslide. And Jesus came in John chapter 21 for a rescue mission. It is not part of the thesis. In fact, they had sent the, the manuscript of the printers before Peter now brought that dimension. They had to retrieve it from the printers to include this episode. Are you with me? There are many of us that are in John chapter 21 now because of lack of alignment with spiritual authority. And that John chapter 21 is not part of the thesis. May you not spend so long a time in John 21. That is a strong prayer. <laughs> okay, you did, okay, okay. You are, you are on soft mode. I, I believe your quiet amen came from the depth. That was why utterance was, was, was difficult. You will be wasting time if you are not aligned. All the activities you'll be doing will not strike a chord anywhere. Because your life in the spirit is a story that God is telling from heaven. If you are in alignment, that story goes out. Just like Jesus was a theater for the expression of another. Because he was submitted to his authority. Every time you come out of alignment, the story stops. When last was God able to continue his tale through your vessel? When Jesus left glory, just like I said, he decided that holding on to his privileges as God was not anything to cleave to in the face of the facts that the purposes held up in the Godhead was suffering loss and a sacrifice needed to be offered to redeem that project. He didn't feel that holding on to his privilege was, was anything. And he was willing to come as a man. You remember Gethsemane? Jesus made a plea we didn't see his will. We didn't see him at work at any time until Gethsemane. Then he now said something. He now made a petition that was apart from the position of the father. Are you with me? Yes, sir. If it is your will, can you arrange that this cup, this cup will pass? So that's when we discovered Jesus was not a robot. He had his own mind. He had his own will. But he chose to surrender it to God. Even after making that petition to reveal to us that he was complete. Only that he was subject to the Father. After making his proposal, he still subjected it to. It's not as if sometimes it will not be difficult to achieve compliance. The Father is aware of that. Of the struggle. But if you want to position your destiny in such a way that it will not be subject to assault, you must be running an errand for someone that is higher than yourself. My uncle was the training manager in First Bank. He is in charge of recruitment. He said, I should apply. I prayed about it and God says, I have no place for you in the banking sector. However, are you with me? Yes, sir. If I refuse to apply, he is going to go to my mom, go to everybody and say, be foolish. You are not serious. You are worthless. Because when I delayed, he had already gone round. So, I now applied. I went back to the place of prayer and said, Lord, make it impossible for this man to give me a job. I applied to fulfill all righteousness, to deliver myself from some attacks that are not part of, they are not necessary to the fulfillment of the plan of God for my life. After applying, I went back to pray, to ask God to make him important in this matter. 
you have to be crazy to be praying that a job should not come out for you when you don't have another one. At the end of the day, my uncle could not employ me. So the whole talk stopped. And I went back to God and said, ah, unemployment was coming and you rejected it. May I know the plan you have? You know this prayer point took one year. And during the course of this one year, there were many things that came up that he said, I, I'm not in that thing, no, I'm not in it. One year of prayer and fasting. I spent the whole year praying. I, I will eat sometimes 11 in the night, 9 in the night. Sometimes I don't eat at all. And it was like that for one year. I became as slim as... That was when the HIV was raining. I, they, they thought I was. I was a victim. <laughs> many times I asked my wife, because I was like that when I proposed to her, why did you accept? <laughs> I, was, I, 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 I was checking my archives and I saw how I was looking. Jesus. Why did you... By what means did you accept this proposal? When I, the fasting had, had taken me out. That is the kind of labor you will labor to be in alignment. And if you achieve that, you will be exalted in due time. And when that exaltation comes, when somebody now comes to fight you upon that exaltation, you don't even have a fight. You will see how God deals with people. Because you are a son of order. So Jesus modeled the principle of obedience in keeping with humbling yourself under the mighty hand of God. These are the things God spoke to me. Okay? He says Satan laughs when a rebellious person preaches the word. For in that person dwells the satanic principle of rebellion. A rebellious man's work is referred to as strange fire. It originates from man and does not require knowing the will of God or obeying the authority of God. So rebellion comes from the heart of the fallen nature. So someone might claim to be doing God's work with that principle. Satan laughs at him. Because everything that person is doing is actually doing God's work, Satan's way. <laughs> now, you see, the issue of authority, everything that comes from that realm comes with it, an authority ticket. Because the true custodian of authority is God. He delegates us with authority. The proof that we are sent is that we have clearance to do what we do. And when we come under opposition, that's when your authority is tested. God himself will announce you to demons and to men because you are accurate. Because what you are doing, you are not doing it because it's what you want to do. You are doing it because it is what God wants done. I got feedback some time ago. I got feedback. There was an attempt um, what do they call it? They took some of our names to a shrine to employ satanic power to bring us injury. And my name was on the list. Hallelujah. The thing that I did for which my name entered that list, I did in the service to my God. And so when the name arrived at the place of the formulation of injury, the, the contractor was injured. Mm. He was injured. Hallelujah. And then the person that brought the contract, he came under the threat of death and had to confess so that he would leave. And obviously, his soul is, is valuable to God, so he had to leave because in that state, he would have been lost. So he had to be restored. But in the process of this restoration, we got the gist that there was a contract. Meanwhile, we were not aware that there was such a thing. 
And the Holy Spirit did not bother revealing that there was such a challenge that was going on behind the scene. But you see, when you are in alignment, when you are under authority, the security structure that, that, that governs your life, that protects your life, is operational whether you are aware or not. Because authority is not emotion. Hallelujah. One of the ways by which it will be confirmed that you're operating in alignment is when the devil shows up. And then if God comes to your rescue, it means you didn't send yourself. And it is critical for us to know that we are, our lives and destiny, our families are operating under the mighty hand of God. You, you became saved through faith. Living in the saved realm is by obedience. So authority is critical in the administration of your destiny. Hallelujah. Because it was designed to make him preeminent. And in the book of Ephesians, the Bible says, the place where his throne is in heaven. Hallelujah. Happens to be the highest topography of heaven and the reason for that is God designed that he should feel all things that is the reason for pitching his throne in a high place there's nothing higher than where his throne is because everything is supposed to reflect him and that reflection will only take place when you are aligned with his authority and so according to Paul living in this realm is living Christ and that possibility is tied to our operating under his authority waiting to receive instruction there is no you are not mobilized for activity if he has not spoken you are not mobilized you say, oh I'm praying for direction that's good business stay there until the great monarch of Zion begins to whisper he doesn't speak anyhow because the first time he used words in the book of Genesis he used it for creation as humorous as Jesus was, he never cracked a joke throughout the Gospels. Because if Jesus should come and say, hey, your head big, what will happen is that your head will become big. In the proportion of what he means by big. <laughs> when the scripture says, God is not a man that he should lie. Neither is he a son of man that he should repent. He, he, he's, not, he's not saying that God is so decent, even though he can lie. Uh, he refrains from lying because of his nature. No. He's saying that God operates on an energy level such that anything he says becomes true. And he doesn't, repent, he doesn't need to repent. He doesn't need to reframe it. Now, so the, 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 way, the way his words, the way he uses words, different from the way we use words. We use words for communication. He can use words. He use, the first time he used it, creation. Other times, it's for rulership. Because God doesn't need to stand up from his throne. He rules by decrees. Wait for the decree of your own life. Wait. It's, it's good business. If you are going to be secure in your advancement, you say, oh, I have all the papers. I have all the qualification. I... Get feedback. Because the story of your life is the expression of his will. That's the story of your life. Not the expression of your certificate. Not the expression of your training. You might even be trained. You might be a technocrat in a particular field and you might decide that you will not function there. So your life is supposed to be an expression of his way. So there was a deliberate design to ensure that in all things he must be preeminent. So the question is in your life, is he preeminent? Is he the one driving your life? If he's the one driving your life, you have authority to revenge every disobedience because your obedience is what? is fulfilled. The moment I began to walk in rebellion to the instruction he gave, death started walking in me. And the moment I now came and aligned myself, there was no need for prayer. The process of recovery began. And in six months' time, I was back. The Lord kill it and the Lord make it alive. Blessed be <laughs> the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Still from my script, I said, the one who is not subject 
to authority will eventually be a slave to him who does. So if you're in alignment, the person that is operating in rebellion will operate under you eventually. So we must seek to be in alignment with God. When a man comes to fight you, it is God that will answer. When a man tries to, to frustrate your life, it is God that will answer. You know, when I wanted to marry, just like I told you, my wife is Yoruba. Her parents are very, very educated. But when they were told that the man from Kogi State is coming to seek her hand in marriage, especially the mom, her preference would have been that she marries Yoruba. I didn't expect that uh, because of the level of enlightenment. <laughs> However, that was the case. And that's why my courtship lasted for five years. Because for five years they said, no, this thing can work. So, it's all right. I went about other things, other businesses. Other, I said, I, at least I know God's position about this matter. So let him have his way. How did God intervene? God appeared in a dream and said, you are about to die now. That is, I, didn't, I don't create dreams. You, your, your ticket for life in this realm is being considered. Don't resist my son. So it's a dream that facilitated my wedding. There are so many stories about weddings. This is my own. The one that spoke came to fight, to confront. There is so much power when you are preaching on the alignment. Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. Amen. The issue here is where does the instruction of the Lord lie? That's the issue. Authority is so critical. And if you have not fulfilled your obedience, there are several things that will bedevil you. You will not have authority to revenge. Oh, you'll be incapacitated. And your life will be a contradiction. I've tried to diagnose the reason behind a lot of people's suffering. Because I feel so incapacitated when someone has a need, a, challenge, a genuine challenge, and I, I can't help. And I found out that there were many people I could not help. I was struggled, and I went back to the Lord, and then the Lord began to open me up to the structures of the invisible realm. He governs all of us that are in the body. And I found violations in many instances. And I now discovered the reason why God refrained from bringing intervention. Even though they were his bona fide children. The circuit was not completed. And Satan had provisional authority in their space. Hallelujah. Now, if you are a proud man, you will not go far with God. Because even the way your salvation was uttered, it was uttered in such a way that boasting will be excluded. At the end of the day, it is not about your agenda. It's not about, it is not about you. Because in the design, it was deliberately fitted so that he will be what? Preeminent. When we begin to function with spiritual authority and acknowledging ranks, then you begin to see a harmony that will build in the body of Christ that will bring healing to our nation that is, is, is suffering from the issue of blood. Because the life of our nation is leaking out. It will take alignment. It will take, it will take that kind of strength that comes in the ecclesia where joint supplies for us to redeem our nation. It will begin in the house of God. God will not operate outside of authority. In fact, in fact, one of the reasons why God's authority is in the center of his administration is because God will have to exert his authority in order for him to achieve his divine purpose. Now, the reason why an unbeliever are you with me? Yes. That is somewhere now, maybe recovering from hangover, from yesterday's booking. You might go there with your prophetic anointing and you discern him that he's actually an evangelist. But the reason why he cannot be an evangelist is that he's not in a realm where God can exercise his authority on him. 
And as long as that is the case, that ordination will never come to pass. Because if God will achieve his purpose, he must of necessity, what? Exercise his authority. The system God is running cannot prosper outside of authority. Ooh, well, anything God does, he puts an authority structure. Sorry. I ask for forgiveness first before I say this one. You see, are you with me? Forgiveness from all the sisters. God saw how powerful you are when he designed that you operate under the authority of a man. Mm. You see, because in things that come from him, there is an authority structure that manages it. And that authority structure, you were not consulted with before it was established. Okay, let me, let me stop. It's, it's going to cause uh, some, uh, some bad blood. So. <laughs> Hallelujah. When we all align, then you begin to see a harmony. A harmony. If you yourself, as the head of the home, is in alignment to the authority of the Christ, then your home will become an expression of God's kingdom. Because grace will flow. The gradient is established. Grace will flow. And, and the expression of what you will have is better than any marriage book can ever talk about. Because what is responsible for what is happening is not visible. Job chapter 4. I have 10 more minutes to introduce the next point, which is spiritual experience. Job, sorry, 42 verse 5. Job 42 verse 5. This is Job's testimony. And this testimony is coming after a long time. You see, somebody can summarize the result of 25 years experience in one verse. He said, I have heard of thee by the hearing of the ear. Now my eye see thee. That is migrating from information to experience. The way God operates is such that he wants you to have a walking experiential relationship of him. That kind of relationship that the Bible says, and Adam knew his wife. Are you with me? There is a knowledge that you cannot get in the outer court. There's a knowledge you cannot get intellectually. There's a knowledge that comes because of an experience. And Job, in this scripture, is revealing to us how that what he taught when he heard was quite different from what he now has upon experience i have heard of the by the hearing of the ear but now my my eyes see when you study your bible put on new eyes and new lenses and try to find out scriptures that that came out of experience you hear Peter say, mm, I perceive that God is no respect our person. <laughs> I perceive. A man that has experience is superior to a man that has information. Whereas information goes into your soul, experience goes into your heart. When you come under satanic attack, what is in your brain? will jump out, will, will, will be deleted, control the elite. It is only that which is written upon your heart that can come out. Sorry, I'm out of time. I would like us to pray quietly. Where we are seated, you don't need to stand up so that you don't, just keep the gravity, keep the gravity. Oh, my friend didn't come up today, my friend. You see, God wants to take us deeper. He wants us to know him in the privacy of our heart. 
he wants us to understand how he thinks the thoughts that he has towards us the things that are going on in his mind concerning you he wants you to be that theater through which men will give him worship through which his memory will be locked on the hearts of men you will be that platform to advertise his glory there is a call to alignment a call to compliance a call a call to submit under his authority humble yourself under the mighty hand of God and he will exalt you in due time Kubai so sela bres kupe tamina bruke vadis kumbahala. Embros kumbe la kumpe lezine la kumbra uske tamina. Aiko mantos kabarato mina selikumbali. Paboria sila mahande kumberala. 